Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 17.1 and iOS 17.2 beta one have both been out for over a week at this point. I wanted to talk about some more new features that have been found in iOS 17.2 beta one since the iOS 17.2 beta one is out. What's new video. We'll also talk about the overall experience, some bugs that are going on as well as some news and more. We'll also talk about your experience based off the YouTube community poll, where at the time of this video, there's an incredible 26,000 votes and 315 comments. I've read every one of those comments to determine what the overall updates are like right now. Now, first let's talk about a little bit of news. Apple music actually used to have a voice plan that was less expensive, but let you access Apple music using Siri only. Many of us forgot about that. Apple music voice was $4.99 per month and Apple has now discontinued it. So that's something that's no longer here as of November. If you have a plan such as Apple one, you wouldn't have noticed this, but they did raise the prices on all the different plans as well. As of the time of filming this video, Apple has just updated their return policy for the holidays. If you're in the United States, you now have the option to hold on to a product, use it or return it by January 8th. If you purchased it between November 3rd and December 25th. So you can actually purchase it now, give it as a gift. And that person has plenty of time to return it. If it's something they don't want, or they'd like to choose something else. Tap to pay is now available in Ukraine. So if you're using that to pay someone, that's something that rolled out in the U S some time ago, you can actually use your wallet tap to pay just like you would with your Apple card, but you can receive payments as well. Apple held their Mac event last week and they discontinued the touch bar, Apple Mac. I actually didn't cover that as I didn't recognize it at the time, right after the event, but now we have the 14 inch MacBook pro base model and then the more advanced models with 14 and 16 inch. So they've discontinued the touch bar and the touch bar is no more. Now let's talk about some new features. One thing I wanted to mention first though, is maybe if we go into notes, so we'll go into the notes app and within notes, if you're using the markup tool, they've made a change to this with iOS 17 that people are starting to notice. Now the magnifier is now missing. So we don't have the magnifier. Some people said it was under the shape tool, but I'm not seeing it anywhere. And the magnifier is not there and neither is the blur tool for many people. So it seems like these things are gone. Why they would have removed these. Maybe people weren't using them regularly, but either way, hopefully they bring them back or if they've put them somewhere else, I haven't been able to find it just yet, but if you have, let us know in the comments below, but many people seem to be complaining about this lately within your iCloud settings. Apple has updated the recommended for you section. Now it looks like they pushed this on the server side as many people are also seeing this on iOS 17.1 and 17.2. So you'll see 17.1 on the left 17.2 beta one on the right. So you've got different options for suggestions with free up storage, discover and more. So it looks like they've updated this section, just made it rearranged a little bit. You may see this changed elsewhere also. Within weather, if we tap on maybe the forecast for the next few hours, go into our conditions section. If we scroll down, there's a new section for totals for precipitation. You'll see past 24 hours and next 24 hours. So this is something they've added to show us the total rainfall amount. If we go into messages, the new catch up arrow is finally there. If you've actually been in a conversation and someone's been messaging you with many sentences or a conversation going back and forth, you're within a group. There's now an arrow that will catch you up to the last conversation you read. I saw the arrow myself right here in a conversation and I've seen other people report this as well. So it looks like iOS 17.2 also adds this feature as well. Now the video player has actually been updated with this version also, depending on what video you're playing. And I actually wasn't able to see the old video player, but I am seeing new features where it says info and up next in the same movie within the TV app. So on the left is iOS 17.1 on the right is 17.2 beta one. So I have an up next section and info playing the same movie. I don't see the old movie player though. So let me know if you're seeing that. Also, if we go into our Apple ID settings down at the bottom, you'll see where we have contact key verification. Now I was wondering if any of you are using this yet. I haven't been able to enable it yet as I have to update a ton of different devices to do that. So if I tap continue, we'll give it a second. It wants me to update all of these devices or remove them in order to actually use contact key verification, similar to some of the privacy settings we have before. So that's something I'll have to do later, or maybe just remove some of the devices from this account. But either way, let me know if you're using this. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Now, before we talk about releases, one thing I wanted to mention is that I was thinking of using an iPhone to record some video. I typically use higher end 
high-end cameras, but with Apple actually recording an Apple event, I've recorded some main videos for this channel with an iPhone 15 Pro Max using this one in natural titanium. I'm curious if you'd like to see maybe a series of videos recorded and maybe see what it looks like. Let me know in the comments below. Now, if you're using a weather widget on the lock screen and it was snowing, there's a bug that's pretty prominent that's standing out. So I actually have weather information here. Let me get rid of this, but I don't have snow in the area I live in right now. But if you do, some people were seeing that as sort of a blank icon of a page document. So this is what it looks like. And this is actually from a viewer that sent this along, but you'll see if it's snowing out, there was a page document here where it was actually just showing that instead of the actual snow conditions. So that's something Apple needs to fix. And it appears to be on iOS 17.1 also. So it will need some sort of update. And that leads me to iOS 17.1. 1.1 Apple is actively working on this nine to five Mac and Mac rumors apparently have seen it in their logs. Mac rumors posted a story about it and it seems like Apple's working on it. So we should see that hopefully within a week or so to resolve that bug along with some others. Also, hopefully this week we'll see iOS 17.2 beta two. It's been a week or so or more than a week. And now we're on a two week schedule. Hopefully Tuesday or Wednesday we have beta two. We also have a bunch of things coming out this week, but to go along with these updates, Apple stopped signing previous versions of iOS. So iOS 17.0.3, iOS 16.7.1, iOS 16.7, and iOS 15.7.9. Apple unsigned all of those. So if you were on previous devices, you can no longer downgrade. Even if you have iOS 16, you'll have to be on the most recent version. Apple updated AirTags firmware this week, and they brought it to version 2A. 61. Now, if we go to Apple's firmware website, the last version says 2.0.36 and says it resolves an issue with the accelerometer not activating in certain scenarios. That's the most recent update from Apple. And if we go into find my, we can actually see the air tag and what the actual firmware version is. You'll see one here, tap on it. It will show you the firmware in the bottom, right? This one hasn't been updated in a while as this is one without a battery that's been updated, but this gives you an idea how to check it. This week, we'll also have the new max release the 14 inch MacBook pros, and those are actually getting a day one update when they release to the public. They were shown off at the scary fast Apple event, and they'll have a new build of Mac OS 14.1, bringing them to version 23B2077. So we have a bunch of different builds for all of the different Mac OS and iOS versions. Hopefully once iOS 17.2 releases and Mac OS 14.2, we'll actually see similar build numbers. It's gotten a bit confusing lately, and hopefully we'll see that at the end of November or early December, like they did last year with iOS 16.2. We had that around the 13th of December last year, so we could expect that. This week, we also got a new Apple Safari technology preview that released on the 1st of November version 182. That's available now. So lots of things going on with different updates. I expect quite a few more before the end of the year. Now, also one thing I wanted to mention is watchOS 10.1 users are complaining of a lot of battery issues. There's a lot of battery drain issues for some people. Sometimes it's related to an app. Sometimes it's just happening to many people. I thankfully haven't had it, but I'm on the beta. My wife and my daughters haven't had it on their Apple watch, but many people are experiencing it. I have a separate video I released earlier the other day that actually covers saving some battery life on Apple watch since people asked me to make that. So be sure to check that out if you're having issues and hopefully Apple updates this soon with watch OS 10.2. We also could get watchOS 10.1.1 to go along with iOS 17.1.1 and hopefully fix some minor bugs with battery life and maybe some other things before we get watchOS 10.2 and iOS 17.2. Now, as far as the overall experience, we know what iOS 17.1 is like. We've had that for a little while with the RC and then the final version. And for the most part, it's better than iOS 17.0.3. However, it's still not good enough. And iOS 17.2 is actually looking pretty good. In fact, it's actually more promising than what we expected with it already. So iOS 17.2 finally brings some positivity to updates as many are having great experiences with it, but that doesn't mean it's without issues, but it's getting better. The issue I mentioned before with the weather widget or just on the lock screen and not showing properly. We also have issues where sometimes the notifications are squared off for me again. There's that notification bug that's never been fixed since iOS 16. And there's also some issues with the wallpaper. Sometimes the wallpaper will be very dim. You'll set the wallpaper 
And then when you go to your home screen, it sort of gets washed out. I saw this on iOS 17.1 for some users. I've experienced it twice with iOS 17.2. It's not really functional, but it actually affects the overall look of the phone. It was very dim and washed out. And I've heard this from many other people as well. However, it does fix some issues. We'll talk about a few more bugs in a moment, but iOS 17.2 will fix the Wi-Fi connectivity issue and slow down according to iClarified. Apple gave them some feedback and it seems that people having issues with Wi-Fi, including myself, or sometimes it's just really slow. I have to disconnect and reconnect and then it finally works again. I haven't experienced this on other devices, Android devices only on iPhone. So there's definitely a bug there. Apple's acknowledged it and apparently going to fix it very soon. Also, as far as other bugs and issues, well, I've run into a few odd ones here and there that a reboot seems to fix. There's been some odd touch bugs where I've actually not been able to touch the screen. It wouldn't work properly. There's a volume bug where sometimes the volume isn't correct or it changes on its own. Also, one thing I've heard that I thought was fixed is the mic is not working on phone calls for some, for some people when they're on a speaker phone. And one person said iOS 17.1 fixed it, but then others say it's still there. So maybe they'll be on a phone call on speaker phone and the other end can't hear them at all. So there's some issues here and there. A reboot fixes that for them though. Also, if you're using Apple music, the play count is wrong for some people. And again, sometimes FaceTime isn't working on T-Mobile. That seems to be specific to the carrier though. And we're not sure why. One thing I've been noticing that's very annoying is a keyboard bug. So you'll see right there, I swipe down, the keyboard's not there and just the search bar. I'll do it again. The keyboard comes back. I have found this to happen over and over. Sometimes you lock the display, unlock it, go back in, swipe down, and it works. Other times it just doesn't work. So that keeps happening to me over and over today where it went away, I thought with iOS 17.1 and now it's back. So there's some odd bugs, but overall I think it's very good. A reboot fixes all of them. It goes away for a while and it's nice and fast, but some people are having freezing as well, but a reboot again fixes it. So this could be a memory leak error, could be something else entirely, but it is an early beta, but it's much better than other betas I've used this year with iOS 17. Now, as far as camera, I don't think the camera has been improved for older devices. People keep asking if the iPhone 14 is any better. Take a look at a few photos here. We just check this every week to see if there's any differences. I think they're pretty much the same. And let me know if I should continue checking the camera in follow-up videos, maybe next weekend or the weekend after, or are you happy with the results of what you've got with your iPhones right now with the camera? Let me know in the comments below. Connectivity has been good other than that Wi-Fi bug that I mentioned earlier. And pretty much that's it as far as bugs from the comments and different experiences. So definitely quite a few things, but not anything that's major causing you not to be able to use it without a reboot. Again, it's an early beta, but for an early beta, it's pretty good. Now, as far as performance and heat, well, the performance overall is pretty good other than those freezes. Then you reboot and it's back to normal. So going into the app library and scrolling, ProMotion is nice and fast. And on older devices, such as the iPhone 11, apps load pretty quick. If we go into journal, we can turn on lock the journal. We'll do that now. There we go. Apps seem to function as you would expect. Maybe going into different apps such as Shazam or something else, things just seem to work quickly. And I haven't opened it on the iPhone 11 in a while, but in general, most apps are working as you would expect. Games are loading great, frame rates are good. No real issues there. As far as overall heat, well, I have heard a couple complaints from a few of you, but in general, the phone is staying nice and cool. We've been using it this entire time during the video, and it's still fairly cool to the touch. It's only heated up a little bit from my hands, which are a little bit warmer than it. So if we take a look at both of these phones with 17.1 and 17.2 beta one, and with the thermal camera, you can see we're at about 90 or 91 degrees Fahrenheit on the 15 pro max. Not bad considering my hand is much warmer than that. If we move over to the 15 Pro Max running 17.1, we're at 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Again, with Celsius in the hottest point, we're at 33.2 degrees Celsius, and on 17.1, about 29.6. So pretty good overall. It's staying nice and cool for me. Of course, the ambient temperature is around 70 degrees Fahrenheit, so that 
definitely is a factor, but I'm not playing games on it. It's not causing any issues, but it seems to be much better than it has been in the past. When iOS 17.2 beta one came out, I ran Geekbench scores and forgot to mention them in the weekend follow-up. So I thought we'd show you here where we have 2,904 for single core, 7,130 for multi-core. If we go back to the history, I ran it twice today because it was a little low before I wanted to see if it would bump up and it did. So it's doing pretty good overall. However, it's not as good as 17.0. 0.3 at least on this 15 pro max so if we take a look you'll see the score was a little bit higher specifically for multi-core by about 300 or so as far as battery life let's first check the cycle count here so we'll go into general then about and we have 33 cycles on my 15 pro max that i've been using full time other than reviewing a couple phones but you can see it here from coconut battery as well now let's go ahead and take a look at battery life Battery health and charging shows 100% still, as I would expect. And yesterday I had three hours and 29 minutes of screen active time, four hours and 14 minutes of screen idle time. It looks like things have reset a little bit. 50% usage again today has given me three hours and 52 minutes of screen active time, two hours and 32 minutes of screen idle time. A couple days ago though, I think this could have been causing some of the discrepancies where we had almost 11 hours and I hadn't used hundred percent, but I definitely didn't use the phone that much. It seems if you leave standby mode on, it counts that as screen active time while on the charger. So I made some adjustments to the overall settings went into standby. You'll see I have it on here, but if we go into display, it turns off after 20 seconds before I had it set to never. And it actually never shut off when it was on the charger and was counting those screen on time. So that's something that I seems to be a big difference here and was suggested by a viewer. So hopefully that really clarifies things. If you're seeing huge discrepancies between that, try adjusting those settings. Now, as far as if you should install iOS 17.2 beta one, if you haven't yet already, I'd probably hold off the journal app and things seem a little bit buggy at this point, maybe wait for beta two this coming week. Or if you just want something stable or more stable without as many bugs, I'd wait for iOS 17.1.1. Now, as far as what you had to say about the overall experience, let's take a look at some of your comments. We'll take a look at a couple from 17.1 as they seem to vary greatly. But Rihanna Nicole said, I'm using a 13 pro on 17.1 and have noticed better battery life, getting me about eight to 10 hours of screen on time with hundred percent battery usage. And I have 88% battery health from what it says in settings. It's been at 88 for some time now, at least three to four months. And I've had it since December of 2021 is my only phone. My only real issue has been the, the notification bug that's been there for a while, but most of my noticeable bugs are with watch OS 10 on my series seven. Quad Rider Honda says I'm using 17.1 on 15 Pro Max. It's been pretty good for me, but I'm having one issue so far that has to do with the wallpaper on the home screen. They look washed out compared to the lock screen using the same wallpaper, by the way. NJ to AZ Mountain Biker with a 15 Pro Max on 17.2 Beta 1 said one issue I have is contacts are not showing up for some people for text. Jeremy DeBo said iOS 17.2 on 15 Pro Max. Everything has been solid except I've had freezing the last couple days. Only once or twice a day, but any app I open doesn't respond. Today it did it and sent me to the lock screen to key in my pin. Other than that, battery and performance is the best it's been on iOS 17. Brasco Montague says using the 10s max and iOS 17.2 beta one is doing good. It also rectified the reboot issue with iOS 17.1. So that's everything with iOS 17.2 beta one and iOS 17.1. Let me know if there's any other features you've found since the initial what's new video and anything I haven't mentioned. And of course I'll link this wallpaper in the description. Like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.